friends, my name is Renuka and today we will talk about these, all of the shimmery stuff going on as well as some fluorescent watercolor. So I have lots and lots of uh, watercolors, different, different kinds of. And here, these are the shimmery one. If you don't have shimmery watercolors, you don't have any experience with them and you want to try the how they are or, or you want to use them or not, then what you can do is you can just, you know, buy the cheaper version of them. These things you can buy from Amazon as well as from the Michaels. These are the more cheaper versions of them. This is from Yashomito and I'll try to put all the links below and this is from Artist Loft. So both of them are nice. These are these are more vibrant ones and they have some few pastels and these are more muted one and pastels one. They work good uh, there is nothing bad with them but the pigment uh, always watercolor is always about the pigmentation and the intensity of them so they are not that good if you want to really want to use for the cool stuff now these i'm using starry sky from the long time and whenever i use these kind of colors i love to activate them just like that i'm not putting any of the like this is this is already in the palettes these one are the new one in my list this is from the brand uh, como ribo watercolor this i bought from the Amazon and I have already these two from this brand and I really like them and we will activate them so now you can see that we have the shades of copper here the golden the yellowish shade and this is gray shade which is missing in this one and then these are the kind of you can see colory one they have lots of colors in them and while talking to color them I will show you one more uh, with me and these are the ones uh, which is kind of neon neon color and I don't know you can purchase them by separately but they have the backside numbers also as well as all the details on this like neon red neon pink orange and what are the color names like that and uh, I'm gonna activate that also so for activating them I'm just putting the drop of water in them and if you're watching my channel I love to um, try some new things also so these are the colors from a very high-end brand and it's kind of a personal and you can see um on the black these are the ghost colors from seeming shmika brands and this is yeah skim, uh, okay i don't know how i pronounce them properly this is not the uh, us brand or indian brand it's something else and you can see that the color variation so these are the ghost colors so they're gonna look ghost on the like white you can't hardly see them but these kind of colors gives the effect on when you do the like colored paper one so these i bought them but i regret i don't like them much although these are the most expensive ones and then in this series um, these are from Vincent newton cotman series watercolors and if you watch my channel someday before i played with them and try to create something and see how they work so these are the colors and palettes most of the times i put this inside or the box and i will show you how they look so this is the thing i created with them so these are the daniel smith watercolors and some Vincent newton and then i add some of the shimmer um watery color effect on them wet on wet technique you can do wet on dry technique you can do merging mixing techniques wash technique you can i don't know how much you can do the glazing with these because these are like very small you have to at least dip your brush like these kind of palettes so these are the techniques i do with this and then i have this one i love these colors these are quite a unique one you can see the red and these are quite uh you know vibrant one and this is from the color theory brand it is i bought these from okay so this is the theory shop and this one i bought them these are not the promotional video whatever i like i just put put it here and i do the swatching on the different of different kind of stuff and you can see their pigmentation and shimmer is so nice i use them for the christmas cards and other stuff and these are really high pigmented so i really like them and uh, uh, i can show these also uh, so for these i like this I bought for my kid basically that uh, he gonna he saw me using the shimmery colors and he thought that mama can I use so I bought this palette for him but he hardly used he never used it I just bought it and now it's mine thanks to him and this one is my first palette and I bought it from Amazon I still remember and I use this one from for many of my videos so if, if you guys knows me I took a long break in between uh, because of personal health and other things in life uh, but I started using this brand way way before maybe in 2011 or 10 something like that when I started uh, making the videos and all and this is my second or third um, purchase of this but I really like it and you can you know just put the water and they're good to go uh, same thing if you're if you want the darkest pigment you add the little bit of water if you add the more water the pigment will not that way and i'm going to put everything a little bit away from me other thing i want to show you is this one so this kind of brush thing you can get it in the uh, wooden also acrylic also you can see uh, your local shop and you can find it out so you can basically put your brushes kind of a stand there and i really liked it and before that my kid made me some similar like this with the play-doh and it broke so <laughs> now i purchased this uh he get bigger and now he's not using much so this is the another then um uh, vincent newton color card stock so whenever you get whenever you want to use the these kind of colors uh you should swatch them on the white as well as on the color basically on the black uh, card stock so you will see the intensity of the color and you will get an idea that uh, how they're gonna work and how they're gonna look and when uh you layer them with the watercolors it's totally depend the intensity how much water you are putting them like 
I'm going to show you one here right now. So if here on this one, I just took uh, this and I diluted it and then I put it. So I will get like, you know, you can see this intensity because I'm taking it directly from the paper and you can see the things. Okay. Uh, so did we really need... Um, did we really need a swatch for this because i already have the swatch like the small kind of stuff i just showed you like this kind of stuff which is already in my palette i didn't do for these and these and this one um so i will do for these fours uh and that that will be the awesome thing and now i'm going to put them a little bit as, like this here so that we can focus so i want to put them like this the colored one in the different and the kind of black gray and white in one area so when we did the first one we have i'm having a lot of fun by using this and then i'm planning to buy more colors <laughs> maybe the um Chimenka or maybe more professional colors with the daniel smith so i decided to put the three pages now you you find me crazy but yeah, i'm a little op optimistic like you know i love the things that way and then you can grab any of these kind of stuff where you can put your thing goes like that or if you don't want to use this kind of stuff you can use the painter's tape or the other tape to just you know tape it down the stuff so that it will live a little bit flatter and now for particularly this one uh, what's going to happen if i put down directly color on them they will not see so they will not show up that nicely so i'm planning to do something fun with them i don't know what should i do but you can see that you, you will have these kind of stamps which is kind of fun image to do like um, spring is coming so maybe you have this kind of stamp like you can see this stamp this stamp here is having black lines but I, although this is having kind of um, this is inside so i'm searching for these kind of stamps when we are talking about the you know stamping and then putting color inside them find out what you have like fun like this like this you can see this um fish you can draw it because it's very simple if you don't have the stamp but this is kind of fun to draw a fish each time and then color inside it so try to take a simple ones like these ones these are so simple these flowers are so simple that you can just fill them out you know you don't have to think much you want to go a little bit more uh, complicated kind of stuff you can go like these ones right you can look, go like with the leaves also and then these are the best one if, if like personally i want to do something like this like um you know i gonna stamp and then i gonna color inside with the whole thing uh with kind of uh shimmery color or i can just um you know put the circle circle things and then just i showed you before like this circle thing and then i can just you know add the colors inside or i can go crazy and draw these stamps and one i got the colored one and although i got the kind of uh, means like one flower in the white one and another flower in the black one the dark color called scar stock so that i can you know uh, pair them up or you can stamp the same flower two times and that will also be of fun uh, so these are the options these kind of stuff are gonna always look nice and fun or you can have these so this is from simon system and i think this is also from simon system and you can see these uh, rain boots kind of stuff this is this is having more flowers in them but this one is pretty simple you can just go ahead and color them with the watercolor and then see that which color combinations look good so you can do that also uh my personal thing um, is for particularly this book i don't know what i should choose or i can just draw the leaves with the watercolor and then i can see that how they're going to look and that will also a fun because you know i love 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 the drawing the leaves i always love drawing the leaves so i just want to give you an idea that we can do like that and uh, we can then write down the names in front of them so that will be also fun so rather than stamping today we can do that also so let's jump into the process so I have lots of watercolor brushes and most of the times to, you know, separate them from my acrylic or gouache brush. Sometimes I use the gouache one for the um, watercolor or so, but I put this kind of tape. This is just a washi tape to, you know, differentiate them with the others like these are. I just put, I just reuse this jar from my kitchen. Yeah, I have lots of stuff going on. And then this is the, my favorite one. If you know me, I love this Piston Dagger brush. And this is the one fourth um, inch. This is the mini dagger. I really like how it... Um, like you know how the, how this brush is like balance if you can see it's it's a pretty nice balance as well as the pretty uh, nice size and this gives the nice holding to your hand so whenever you are doing the fine detailing try to put your brush like this like my teacher told me once a while when i was a kid use like this put your this finger like this and when you are doing like more mixed media kind of abstract kind of stuff try to um you know kind of mixing the things with a different way like you can put brush this 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 so you can hold the grip and it will give you a very different kind of look all together so that is the total different topic and i'm going out of topic I, sh I should not go out of the topic but yeah so let's start today's thing so what we will do these will activate um, in a little bit uh, so for this side i decided to go with particularly the i just grabbed my brush particularly for these ones so we will start with this palette and I'm going to put this brush aside and I will activate this palette. Okay. So I will just put these colors by whatever they are. I will start from this and I'm going to draw the leaves with them. And you can see. And then 
I will just draw a long stem. I have something in my mind while doing this. Like, uh, first of all, I thought I should just, you know, do the technique which I told you before. Now, now at this moment, like I, my brush is fully loaded, right? My brush is fully loaded. So what will I do? I'm going to put just a... So this is the another... I can't say it's scrap. It's already having too much colors. But I will just put my excess color on these so that it will have that thing on it. Now, it will not reactivate with it because it's an ink. But you can go ahead and use the white paper also and do the same things. Now, again... I'm just putting out this pigment. You can see the pigment is, I'm putting so much pigmented. So you can see, I'm not diluting it much. And then I'm adding this color. Same way. And I can have a little bit of fun while doing it. Like, <laughs> you know, it should be always fun. Why it's, why it should not be like fun. Why it's always, uh, it's always should be like, you know, boring. No, it should not. So now it's time to get the third color. And you can see the brush strokes here. I'm going to let it zoom out so you can see it properly. So now, for this, I'm going to get this side. Maybe I can get this one and this one. So, you know, you can play uh, with your brush and see that how and which side you turn it and it, it, it will give you that kind of effect. You can see that always. And for anything, you need to practice, definitely. But sometimes products make your life easy. That is the basic thing I want to tell you here. Sometimes products makes your life easy. And that is very true because... Sometimes you saw the beautiful pictures of what a beautiful watercolor it is or what a beautiful color it is. Maybe it's abstract drawing. Maybe it's a particular drawing. And then you don't know which color they are using. The pigment pay plays a very, very um, kind of crucial and high role in this. So I just created these ones to having the fun. At the same time, I want to keep this book because these are the art supplies. It's not those like, you know, I'm trying and then I don't like them. These are the art supplies. I want to go again and again them uh, with them. That's why I want to put them um, in this uh, book. Now I'm just creating the big leaves here with the two strokes. These big leaves kind of imitate the, you can make it for the rose petals or something like that. And you can go crazy with them. You can, of course you can make smaller also. I just made this way because I'm kind of having vision that's in the small, like small leaves and then it goes bigger and bigger in the fun. And then you can go vice versa. You can start with the white and come back to here. And these are my last leaves. So these white leaves, that, that will not gonna look much on this white paper. But um, these are good for the darker shade but still you can see these okay, I just grabbed okay, so something, something contaminated here so these are kind of for the washish one like you know if you give the wash to the thing and then it will give that kind of effect so I'm gonna put it just like this so it will it will dry eventually and for, for uh, this side I want the color so um, uh, I want here a watercolor basically and from which I can do these kind of stuff where you can see that how they gonna look <laughs> good and how you can play with them so i'm gonna use the daniel smith so this one is our daniel smith palette which we filled last time and from this i'm gonna choose this olive green kind of stuff by the way you can write your names here i'm not much concerned about that so i'm not writing down and i'm gonna put this palette here it will i hope no i have to stack these first so i'm gonna stack these okay now not a problem and then i'm gonna put this green color here so you can see now, again, I'm using the same brush. I will take a little bit pigment here. And then I'm just putting that pigment here, adding more water. If you can see, I'm adding more water. Still, the pigment is good and nice. I can show you in this palette. You can see. So, I'm going to put this aside. And I will add a little bit more water to it on this side. So, it is get a little bit diluted. And now, it's time to draw the another font. So, again, I'm drawing here the same kind of stuff. Uh... Now you can see when it's light, uh, the this thing got changed. Like the color, you can see it's 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 a really beautiful. Watercolors are the beautiful thing I ever saw in my life. <laughs> when I was a kid, I started those exams for I want to become an architect at that time. So I started uh, giving those elementary intermediate exams. I don't know in the United States what kind of exams you have to be before that. We have the entrance, but we have some other exams also. And I started those, and then my mother bought me a very um, nice palette at that time like she went to a nice uh, shop and she bought that and I was like I have watercolors before that but those are not highly pigmented that way and I still remember it's such a um, like I have that feeling still those goosebumps in my heart still I feel that oh wow kind of stuff going on so you can see here and in this way we are doing the practice of our watercolors also you can overlay if you want to overlay like tone and tone effect what you can do you can go with the lighter color first like 
why should not I show it right now? I can show it right now. So, okay. So, these are the pretty. I just put more water in them now. And... And you can see that now when it's having more water, more diluted, these leaves are more diluted, you will have the lighter shade. Okay. And then when they dried, we can go on it with more dark, darker shades also. So the one brush thing is kind of, I loved it because you don't have to switch your brushes in between. You can drawing the stain with the same brush, the things, other things with the same brush. And that is the fun of these things. Oh, I don't like that leaf, but just I told you that it will work for us no matter what. And now these shades, you can see that these shades are more lighter. Uh, but for doing anything on them or doing any kind of uh, structures on them, we have to let them dry fully and then only we can use. So on this side, what we will do on this side, let them dry for a while. And on this side, we are going to use this one, like the next palette, this Mojo Art palette, so that we get a chance to, you know, we will use this copper, rose gold, bronze, yellow. We will use this palette and maybe we will change the brush this time. Let's grab something else. This one is silver eight. It will be too big for this much drawing. Let's grab smaller one, four or three. This is four. I think I'll grab the four. This is from, I think, Princeton. Yeah, it's a Princeton. And then I will just, I'm going to just grab. So here we'll start with the, now the way they put their um, palette here, I don't like it. Like I was to like go from the lightest to darkest or darkest to lightest, something like that. So these are in the row, but this black I'm going to put in the last. So I will start with this rather than starting with this. So we will start with this yellow and this yellow name is, what is yellow name? The light gold. And you can see the gold difference in both of the palettes, right? These golds are different and this one is different. So when we will put this on the paper, you can easily see. Like it is very different. I want to make it a little bit more filler. And then I will draw again, again. So I don't have anything in my mind when I started this. So sometimes idea just popped up. Now we will use this. And so this is taking more longer than I thought because I didn't thought that I should make something like that. So I will speed up the process because I did the same thing here. And then I will talk again when uh, these things are on this side, the things are right and when we want to do something else with it.
you know, this side of the uh, area is a little bit more dried. Now you can see here, um, these pigments are more, so these are more darker. And this we took the lighter pigment because I want to show you that how you can layer one upon them. So it's not just a swatching the colors, it's more than that. So now here I want to make another branch, which is kind of overlapping on it. But at the same time, uh, it will be more in darker. So I will just draw a thin kind of line there. So this is my stain of the leaf. And then I have a little bit, okay, so I'm going to put this way. So I hope it's clear now. And then I'm taking more vibrant color, more darker shade. And then I'm using the same brush here to add the same kind of leaves, not different. But just because of the vibrancy and darkness of the color, because I'm here using the more pigment, it, get, it will give you this kind of effect at the same time. You can see uh, some of the leaves under these big leaves and that is the main idea I want to show you here and I think there is one more leaf and we are done. So some people don't tend to um, move their work surface at substrate uh, but I don't have problem in doing that. I used to move that substrate sometimes I don't have much um, you know my space here while shooting the video I have so much going on on my table so sometimes I do that sometimes I do this it's totally depend how I want to do. Now main thing, whichever are the dry things, we will use our main color here. So if you remember, we started with this palette and this one is, okay, so this one is starry colors. And now um, we will add this color on this green color. So you will get an idea that how it will look like. Most of the times I use triple zero, zero, zero or liner kind of brush or thin miniature brush to do kind of this kind of technique. I will show you what I mean. So this is triple three but this is the liner brush so liner brush hold more water more color because it is having that long thing so if you want to draw the long lines this is your brush this another one is um simple triple zero brush okay some are very pointed some are like this then this is kind of detailed brush so you will have this kind of point to hold this brush but if you see the brushes there uh, those hairs of the brush they are very all these are synthetic brush uh, so you can see so in this this brush you can create the more detailed work but you have to dip your brush many ways and then this is again a triple zero brush you can use the miniature drawing brush for this kind of stuff also or you can use the pointed brush uh, and just use the point of it like if i put down this brush in the water this is the silver brush you will get this fine point you can see so this is the good quality brush set that's why you get this kind of good point and silver brush is always having this kind of uh, good stuff going on so you're gonna like it you can do the same technique on the uh what do you say on the color swatches also, where you can use the mop brush to do these kind of abstract things. I think I should show that also, why not? So I will show you first of all what, what we call the mop brush. So mop brush is basically is the kind of this kind of brush where you have so much of uh, things like hairs and it will give you a really big wash. If you don't have this, maybe you can use a more bigger brush like this one is the Camelin 12 brush, number 12 brush. If you don't have that, you can use the filbert brush or you can use these kind of uh, flat brushes to make a consistent uh, thing you can use the angular brush also i'm just giving you an option don't get overwhelmed with all these brushes i have and you can just make these kind of swap and you will get that kind of line so these are the small um things maybe you don't have this thing so try to find what you have in your stash and you know go with that i will show you one more so this is a this is the piston brush so these can half in one fourth inch three fourth inch but you can just you know draw with these like this and you will get a very consistent kind of uh, forms and this is a snap 12 round brush which you can put this is also from Princeton and you will get that kind of uh, small brush uh, also so these are the brushes if your drawing is big or you want to do something big if you don't want to do more control you can do these also so now as my brush is out I will show you another technique and we will make this really awesome book I'm so happy that I'm doing this and I'm doing this under the 100 days project okay so this is the green color uh, which we already have here a little bit. I'm going to put a little bit more here. And then this is the brown color, which I'm going to put it here. So I'm going to mix a little bit and see. Okay, so I have a nice swatch here. And then I will just, now you can see one, two, three, four, five, six. We have six. So either you can just measure the things or you can just go ahead and do the things like I'm doing spontaneously. And then I'm just putting this. So you can see that uh, where you can use these kind of brushes. And one, two, three, I think... I don't have uh, much room. I hope I'm able to manage the thing here. And then I have this four and then five. So you need a lots of water as well as the color to move the pigment. You can go twice if you want. Now here we can do the two-tone technique also. We can dip our brush half in other color and half in another color. And we can go ahead and do that two-tone techniques also. 
I will just stop here and see how things are looking. So here I uh, desperately, I, I know that I put more place here just because I want to, you know, write the name of the company and which colors they are. And these are from Amazon, so I can find them in anywhere. If there is an Amazon something, you can find the stuff in other places too. So now for these, these sites, again, we have the six colors. And now what I will do, I'm going to show you in this palette itself. I'll take another brush, any brush, okay. And I just took these colors. So I took this green and I just diluted it. My palette is not yet fully dry. If it's dry, it will give me that kind of effect. And then I will put this aside. And then again, I will take another brush here and then I'll grab this brown pigment here. And I have at least plenty of pigment that I should go with the six one. So I'm using that. So you can see, I didn't speed up these kind of processes because someone, if someone want to watch how exactly I did and they want to do something like that, they can do the same thing, right? So that's why I didn't move. And I, I'm not washing these brushes, I'm just putting them aside so that if I needed more color, I can use the same brushes for the more color. And this is the, that folk art kind of technique where you can, you know, add two colors. So most of the times I use with this my dagger brush to create a two tone color leaves. We will do that also. So for this one, what we'll do, we'll do wet on wet technique. So I'm going to put one, two, three, four, five and six. So it's really hard to see exactly what's going on right now. But um, I can see it and then I'm just putting this pigment here. Now you can see that pigment is flowing. Now you can see the colors. Okay. So if uh, these dry, uh, this pigment will not flow that way, the way you want. And then you need to add more water. Like here, the pigment is a little bit dried. Uh, the area is a little bit dried. So it's not moving. Okay. And after this, I will put this brush as it is. I'm going to choose another brush or you can use the same brush also. But I will choose the other brush. And or I can use the same, this brush, the brown brush, which I use for the pigment. And then I'm just tapping it a little bit here and there to add the pigment. So where, where there is a water that will just flow there itself. You can see sometimes it's fun to watch. If you watch that, those fun things, uh, sometimes they came on the Instagram or something like that in YouTube shots that where they put just a colors. Ah, it's love to, it's, it's like having to watch. And then I'm just adding this color. So now this is not perfect. I know this is not perfect, but um, we will give a little bit time to dry. There are so much pigment in that uh, and so much water in that. So it will really take took a little bit time to dry. And I don't mind, and I'm just putting a little more pigment of brown here, just because this side I choose the brown color. And you can see how it's moving. Wow, it's nice to watch. And here I think I need more. Okay, I just want to make it. So is it perfect? No, it's not. Do I do I want perfect? <laughs> no, I don't. If I want perfect, I will draw the squares and then I color them inside the square, and then you know I do the things. So on, on this side, this pigment is going a little bit more further. So what I will do, I'm going to just, you know, go ahead and just grab that extra water. I'm just using the water paper towel for doing this. I will not dab on it because if I dab on it, it will just, you know, oh, let's go like that. If I, I dab it, I, I can just, you know, fix it. Uh, for particularly these one, I don't want to dab. I just want to them as they are. And if you move them, the pigments will move or just because we put lots of water. So now we are heading again to our project, what we started. So we started with this colors. Now I will add this color on these leaves as well as on this, on these things also. So if I do wet on wet technique, like I'll show you. So for particularly with this side, we'll do wet on wet technique. And that is such a beautiful idea to show all the techniques here. I think that is the awesome way. So if I want to do wet on wet technique on this and I want to use each of these colors, I will start with the yellow color. I can just put a little bit of yellow here and there and you can see how that color is moving. At the same time, I have some color in the, the brush. So I will, I can do this. I'm removing the excess color and then I can do. Now here we are doing a uh, dry technique because if you see, I'm just creating that glaze on it. You can just go ahead and create on half of the leaf and that's it. So you can see that. Now next color is this color. This is a kind of gold, pretty similar to the first palette. And then I'm again putting this gold here to see how it's work on weight on weight technique. Now, remember now this palette is, uh, this color is a little bit, you can see, this color is a little bit uh, yellowish, 
golden color so it will look more beautiful on that this is more just like lime yellow kind of stuff and here what we do i'm gonna choose a more thinner brush for this like a pointer or thin brush i'll use this brush i'll again show this palette and this is my color this is my second color right so i want to show you the techniques with the second color and i put the more diluted color here so that you can see i'm creating the layer on a uh, dry water leaf but still it is so transparent just because of how much pigment and how much water i'm taking it is giving me that kind of effect right so uh, i will post a really close up nice photos in the daylight when we will do the like in the morning and then ah uh, time for time to do this color so i'm going to just put a little blob here and there you can see how water work beautifully with these colors right so every time i'm adding this color i want to create something pattern or something different so that i can see i have that kind of palette with me that how, what i can do with these different time differently and when i can use the techniques which technique going to look better and you know i can go backward and forward with this uh, particularly if you want to um, like this is dry on dry technique here i am using on the leaf what i am doing i am just putting i am not glazing anything i am just putting dots to color them now if i put a white pen around it or black paint around those dots that dots will pop up if i don't do that that will just give me a muted effect if i use white it's give me vibrant effect if i use another color like any different color like maybe a brown it will give me subtle effect so it's totally depend how what and when you want to do the stuff like that now this is i think i need more water in this because this is pretty dry and then i'm just putting this again here so this is a nice subtle copper color this is the copper color but it is um, more towards the peachy copper color and i really liked it now if you saw these patches here which i'm creating on this side if you saw these patches you can create this kind of mixed media patches and you can write on them right you can do some kind of fun techniques with them and i'm just adding this little bit of something on these so uh, sometimes you want a subtle effect sometimes you want a darker effect totally depend which kind of painting you are doing and now this is the copper dark color and you can see my pigment is going on this way and i don't want but it's got there okay so now here maybe we can show a different technique like i'm try to make a stripes with this so it is got little bit diluted with this now my paint is just got contaminated i need to wash it i need to wash the brush and then i'm going to so i always do two or three jars of water with me one in pure water one is for washing the brush and if i contaminate it something i have another one so i can create the cross effect hatching effect with it okay and oh particularly this one i can use the tone and tone kind of thing so it's uh, really enhance your drawing in few way if you don't have much fan of the shimmery things still it is in a subtle way you can use the coppers and you know the other colors like this you can go with the subtle colors rather than the popping colors and that will also work best now i can mix this color with the water color just like that i'm doing here on the corner and that will also give me uh, a little bit different color and and i can create a kind of glazing kind of technique so what is glazing glazing is you are putting the all over color on something and you can still see the underneath what going on so for glazing you need a very thin layer of a color you don't want a more pigment you want more water in that so you can see here what i'm doing here i'm doing kind of a glazing kind of stuff so this this part is done now we will do some uh, dry on dry techniques also and i'm just adding this little bit here i'm just taking this more color going on there so that it will dry nicely and for the other colors i don't think so today we have a time and for those colors like shimmery water colors we will do it tomorrow so here i will show you another technique with this brush as we are talking about the glazing our first color is this yeah our first color is this gold i'm going to dilute it more now i don't want a full concentrated color so i will just add a little bit of water more and then if i draw or just a line on these you can see how beautiful it is i hope like catching that image okay and a little bit more let's see i can put here if nicely 
I hope I'm okay. So now you can see how beautiful that lines are. And then for the next one, I will now I'll show you how you can use these liner brushes. Oh, I'll show you that in the last one because that is very, very good. And then I'm gonna show you here like this gold. I took it really nice, thick color. And here just we created dot. Same way we can create a dot here. But after putting that dot, uh, whatever leftover paint I have in the brush, I'm gonna squeeze that out. Like I just squeeze that out. So this is another technique you can do. Then we have this pretty nice gold. So this gold is so pretty that we can create a beautiful things with this. I'm gonna create the fine lines with this. This gold is like pure gold or like gold jewelry. So now you can go ahead and make these lines on both the sides. You can get creative, make sides on one line and one side you can put a dot or a plane. Or you can just glaze on one side. It's totally depend how you want to do. And I will post all the detailed photos of this on my blog. I hope I have this time because it's really hard to make a same day project and then edit it and then post it with the photos and everything on the blog. So, but I'll try. And then I will put these. So you can see how beautiful, how beautiful it is. You can see how beautiful it is. And now particularly this one is our third color here. So for third one, we can add a little bit here also. Maybe. So now here we can see what we can do on our dry, dry on dry techniques. I'm going to go ahead with the same pattern and create a kind of a chevron pattern here. And that will also give an idea that how it's going to look on different colors. Okay. The first pattern, the lines, draw the lines. So this side I'm giving like more mixed media doodle kind of stuff going on. Because I do both the things. And on this side, I have some kind of different ideas in my mind while, while I'm doing the traditional watercoloring or something like that. So that is the another thing. I'm creating here a fan kind of structure with only the brush strokes. I really like this kind of stuff um, while making a watercolor paintings or stuff. The brush do all the work. And then we have this little bit light kind of gold color, which is not more prominent. It's kind of subtle gold, I can see. And then... So these are my ways of doing the things. Maybe you like some kind of different marks while doing this. So go ahead and do your thing, uh, which you love to do on your paintings. Or you can just follow mine and see what you're liking in them. Like if you like something in them, you can copy that and do. Uh, look, there is nothing like self-taught art artist or, you know, uh, you learn things from the nature always. So nature is always your teacher. Um, you can't invent anything by yourself. You can like, it's already there. You are just improvising it, in my opinion. So yeah, so for this one here, I'm just going with, thing like this more pressured one and then you can do whatever kind of doodle you want on this side because it's more having more space to do the stuff and for the leaves we have really less space to do the work area is so small so now i will not suggest that now particularly this one i'm trying to create a glaze here with this color so you can see underneath it, the green color, but at the same time, you can get that shimmery shine on that green color. I will took the photographs when it's dried in the sun so that you will get a better idea what I'm talking about. But still, if light catches, you can see that glaze here. And I love these kind of uh, glaze. You can do this on the leaves also. So rather than doing the full leaf, you can just go ahead and choose the half leaf of doing. I think today's project is so long. I'll try to put all the supplies below and maybe I will not post this. It's going to take me two, three days to post this, uh, but it's okay. It's still someone get benefit out of it. It's still get one smile on anyone's face. I'm happy. I love to read your comments. I, I love, I want to see that what people want to see because my channel is all about the things I do, all about the fun stuff I learn in my journey uh, from someone else, from YouTube, from nature. Sometimes you explore something like these dots. I can't say that I discover these dots. <laughs> it's already in the nature. I'm just putting those, you know, and so this is another uh, technique where you can just choose one side and just you're going to give a shading. You can do this with the colors also, like two colors, things also. Or you can add this color in the basic color, like here, basic color is green. And you can do uh, this technique. Like if I have a leaf-like structure here, I can just go. And then I will show like this. So in the daylight, it will look really nice. So today we use these two palettes. Watercolor Pansite by Corambi, Kobe. And this one is like starry colors. This is long way and this is from 
the Mojo Heart, Mojo Heart, and this one is from the Kutreka, Gansha Tommy's one. And I'm really happy with these two colors and how they turn out. And uh, now what will I do? I'm going to just uh, keep it a little bit dry. It's not dry on this side. And then I will write the names on it. So after adding all the names and colors, you can see that it's I put all these little bit blank sides here and there. So what you can do afterwards, whichever doodle you like, you can do it in a black, white, golden, uh, maybe anything to just check on these, like how these colors look all together. So you have that kind of palette, like when you know that this green we use, this is from this uh, Jedi Genuine, this is from the Daniel Smith and this copper color this kind of color is kind of this one this is also from the daniel smith but you can choose most of the colors which you use more like these colors are my vibrant palette i use them um for different kind of purpose and this this, this is for different kind of purpose so everyone has their own thing you can use the same um white blue uh, white sorry white golden silver and black for these things also because you have these spaces uh here still remaining and you can add your doodle or some kind of mark so that you will understand that how these colors look all together so this is for the today's project. See you in the next project. And until then, have a crafty life. Do you have any questions? Please leave in the comment and let me know how much you like this video.